Hello, my friends. Dennis Chang here. We're in Montreal, and I live back there. This is the park behind my house. I often take my students here, my homestay students. Uh, I'll talk about that later. But um, today I want to talk to you about what we call gypsy picking in this style, or rest stroke technique. Uh, this video is not a lesson per se. It's more uh, a history lesson, if you will. I'll talk to you about how this technique came about, where it comes from, and I think this video would be ideal for those of you who are a little bit on the fence, you know, not sure what it's about or whether you should use this technique if you play this style. What kind of, what if the picks make a difference, what angle should the wrist be, whether you use thumb movement or you touch the body, everything. And this video hopefully will demystify some of the, the myths that exist that people are teaching. And who am I to be making this video? So for those of you who don't know me, my day job is uh, I make memes for a living and you can probably see a meme right here and here and uh, I have this side job though I'm the owner of DC Music School where I produce videos for artists such as Burelli Legrand, mm -hmm. Stokelo Rosenberg, Angela Devar, Chavlo Schmidt, pretty much all the big names. I worked directly with them, I got to see their technique and not only that I've been involved with this so-called gypsy jazz style for a very very long time. I'm in close contact with gypsy musicians from all over Europe so I really got to see how they learn this technique and how they use it. So this will probably cover, cover everything. So this technique is ancient. According to experts, the, this technique uh, comes from certain lute instruments, not the actual lute but the ancestor of the lute, ancestors of the lute because they existed in different form in different forms in different countries um, it, some experts say it can be as old as 3000 like uh, since 3000 BC and um, they traced it to the Middle East and to Asia and uh, in preparing for this video I went to the music library I dug up some books on on ancient lute technique or mandolin technique and they talked about this for example in Japan you have uh, the shamisen which is played you probably see a picture here it's played with this technique as well a lot of uh, Middle Eastern plectrum based instruments are played with this technique and then in classical mandolin old classical mandolin not contemporary classical mandolin they use this technique as well so it's been around for a couple of uh, centuries well, not a couple many many centuries and a couple of thousand years so it's pretty funny because nowadays when we talk about guitar technique everyone is familiar with what we call flat picking where you rest the, the hand against the bridge here. Flat picking. And the funny thing about this technique is that it started roughly around the 1930s so it's not even 100 years old. And the funny thing is that when we talk about guitar this is what we assume to be the natural correct technique but that's far from the truth. Hundred, like not even 100 years old versus like what 4,000 5,000 years that's like a huge difference so it's largely forgotten so I hope to reintroduce this technique to general guitar history this technique we call it gypsy picking but it's this is a name that uh, a term that Michael Horwitz from Django books came up with for his book called gypsy picking but as you can see this technique is way more than quote-unquote gypsy picking um, some people also call it rest stroke picking. I don't call it anything really. I just call it like old, old plectrum technique or whatever. The name doesn't matter. What I want to explain to you would be the, the principles of this technique. And ultimately I want to show you that there are no rules. Contrary to popular belief, like a lot of people say, oh, you got to do this 45 degrees, downstroke this, downstroke that. And after having analyzed so many of the best players, I'm gonna disprove everything. <laughs> and if there are no rules, then how do you go about learning this technique? Well, if I explain it through, the, through a historical perspective, it will give you an idea as, as to how maybe you can approach this technique. First misconception about this technique. If you play with this technique, you can play louder, you can project more. I would say that's maybe a half-truth. Um, if you adopt a specific version of this technique, I think it does facilitate playing louder, 
but ultimately this technique is not about projection or volume it's about sound and I'm gonna prove this to you right now there's some people who adopt this technique and they pick very softly and there's some who uh, flat pick and they pick very loudly you like how my guitar is a little bit out of tune they see and um, and I've seen everything in between so no it's not about volume not necessarily about volume it's about sound when you adopt this technique you allow the body to resonate and let me see if you can hear like I don't remember what I played but if I flat pick this same thing resonance. I don't know if you can, if the microphone picks that up. And first of all, you notice that when I flat pick, as, as soon as I strike the open string, I, I have no choice. I kind of have to muffle it. So it cancels out all the reverb. But let's, if, if I just take this and I flat pick, I don't know if you guys hear that. You're missing that reverb. So that's the main issue. It's all about tone and uh, classical guitar players, violinists, cellists, all these uh, acoustic instruments take advantage of the resonance of their instrument to get this round tone, if you will. Mm -hmm.